This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I am Pastor Paul L. Anderson here at the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, where we believe God's blessings never stop flowing. Oh, we're just so excited how God is blessing us to be in his presence one more time. And today we invite you to join us as we hear what God has to say to us on this day. The word of the Lord says, after his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened and they saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and sitting on him. May we pray. Father, we pray that your spirit will descend upon us today and have your way in this service of worship. Be glorified in all that we say and do. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Come on, singers, bless our heart again with another musical selection. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. We've come this morning to give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. For truly, he deserves it all. He's been good to us. So much better than we deserve. Yet he deserves our praise. Listen. My hallelujah belongs to My hallelujah belongs to you.
thank you so very much to the choir. You know, my hallelujah belongs to him as well. And I hope you can say hallelujah as well. You know, hallelujah is the highest form of praise that we can give. You know, it's our giving thanks to God for the wonderful ways he's blessed us and put us in this world in such a time as this. You know, God has blessed us and he's equipped us. We've had our share of bad things that have happened throughout the past week or so, but we've also had some wonderful good things. It is so tragic how that situation happened to uh, Mr. Hamlin while he was on the football field. But look at the good of all of those people who've given to his foundation and how they bless so many. You know, it's always in our lifespan where we see that when things happen, God always has some redemptive word for us all. And today I hope you can find a redemptive word and a redemptive situation in this world in which we live. You know, God has blessed us. It's the year of 2023. Can you believe it? There are so many wonderful opportunities that we have that we can turn things around. We can make sure that we do our best to represent people as they should through and by our elected officials. We can make sure we lift up all of those wonderful heroes. And um, on the other week was a classic example of how important paramedics, first responders are, and the great difference that they make in all of our lives. May all of us be first responders. Let's be the first to respond to those people who have needs and those people in our lives and our families who have catastrophic situations and opportunities for us to show the will of God be manifest through and by human persons. You know, today, I I hope you will say that this is the best day of my life because I'm going to live it for the glory of God. And today we invite you to look into the word of God with us to hear what God has to say. Now, this is that second Sunday in the year. Can you believe it? Uh, we are already experiencing all the wonderful uh, climatic changes that we can see. We've seen some very warm temperatures where we can walk around with short sleeves and now it's cold again. We've seen rain. Uh, we have not seen snow. Uh, in the uh, Raleigh area yet, but you know it's coming and it always does. And we're grateful for this season. I hope you're preparing yourself as we all prepare ourselves for next weekend, the Martin Luther King holiday weekend. Let it be a day on and not a day off. Let's all make sure we volunteer to do acts of service and kindness to people that we don't genuinely see every day. Look with me at Matthew's Gospel, the third chapter, verses uh 13 through 17, a very powerful passage. You, you know, Matthew is the one who gives us a whole lot of information. It's uh, leading up to this uh, pericope that we'll look at today where he has now left the house. And as he leaves this house where he's been gathering with his disciples, he finds his way walking. And as he's walking, he gets to a place and uh, he gets in a boat with his disciples. And then as he's on the shore, he has this encounter. Let's listen to the words uh, that we'll uh, see from God's holy writ. In Matthew, the third chapter, verses 13, the New Living Translation. Then Jesus went from Galilee to the Jordan River to be baptized by John. But John tried to talk him out of it. I am the one who needs to be baptized by you, he said. So why are you coming to me? But Jesus said, it should be done for we must carry out all that God requires. So John agreed to baptize him. After his baptism, as Jesus came up out of the water, the heavens opened and he saw the spirit of God descending like a dove and sitting on him. A voice from heaven said, this is my dearly loved son who brings me great joy. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be unto God. May we bow our heads in a word of prayer. Father, we ask again that the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts would be acceptable in thy sight. Thank you, O oh Lord, for being our strength and our redeemer. We promise that we'll put all of our faith and trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our text of today comes to us of a very powerful story that we begin to read of the baptism of Jesus. The message that I have entitled, Take Me to the Water. Take Me to the Water. Some of us remember as a child when we were baptized. Some of us remember as an adult when we were baptized. I grew up in the tradition of the Baptist church. And every time we got ready to baptize someone, the choir and the musicians would play that great old song, take me to the waters to be baptized. You know, I can vividly see it in my mind's eye. I can remember how we made our professions of faith and then how uh, the pastor took us down into the waters of baptism. And that was such a monumental day in my life. Our text on today begins to let us see a very monumental day in the life of 
all the church and all the believers. Our text finds itself that uh, John the baptizer, uh, who is the character that we'll see in our passage on today, he is now greeting Jesus. Now, Jesus has done some powerful things. He has spent time with his disciples. He is now making his way um, from Galilee to the Jordan River. You know, the Jordan River is a very pivotal river in all of Israel's history. Remember, it was that when uh, Joshua took on the leadership, the one who were to guide the Israelites. Remember, Ro Moses had crossed the Red Sea, but Joshua and the Israelites are now crossing over the Jordan. And as they cross over the Jordan into the Promised Lands, it was this river where we find out in the Testament of old that Joshua had the priests to put 12 stones right in the middle of the Jordan. It was there that they were supposed to ask the question, what are the meaning of these stones? So they could be mindful how God had brought them from a mighty long way, how he had brought them out of bondage, how he had brought them out of Egyptian captivity, how he had taken them through all of the horrible deserts and how God had now brought them to a land of promise. Now, Joshua and those group of people that were with him are now crossing the Jordan. This is the same Jordan. Jesus is now at the point of being at the Jordan River. And now we find out that there is a man in this text by the name of John. Now, John is known as the baptizer. Remember, John's mother, Elizabeth, and Jesus' mother, Mary, were cousins. Remember, there was the first meeting of the two when their mothers had them both uh, being carried in utero. And while they met each other, the text tells us that when John heard the salutation, he leaped in his mother's womb. Well, John and Jesus has had an encounter before. Now, remember, they're distant cousins, but we don't know how close they have been to each other. This text leads us and helps us to understand that John knows about Jesus. Jesus knows about John. But remember, Jesus spent his earlier years of his life away from everybody else, because after he was born, as we know from the Christmas story, the angels told Mary and Joseph, depart because Pharaoh is looking to kill your child. So they went and got away from everybody for a period of time. So now Jesus and John are about to have this meeting again. John is the one who's known as the baptizer. He baptized people for remission of sin. He came preaching and telling everybody to repent and be converted because God wants you to have the promise of his Holy Spirit and the promise of eternal life. Now, John is baptizing those and John is preaching, telling everybody to repent. Now, we know that when John comes on the scene, this is the first time that we've heard from a prophet since the Old Testament prophet of Malachi. It's been a few hundred years. They haven't had a prophet. John was so different. John was of the prophet and of the lineage of the priests of Aaron. You remember Aaron, who was the priest? Aaron was the brother of Moses. And it was through this lineage of priests that we find out that John finds himself coming. Now, John is so different from all the other priests. He was more of like an uh, outer courts priest. He was more like an outer courts prophet. He wasn't a prophet that was hired by the king. He wasn't on anybody's payroll. And for that reason, John told the truth and didn't care who heard it and didn't care who, offend, who was offended by it. He just wanted to convey the message that God would have him to convey. So John comes as this prophet in his day, telling everybody to repent. He pointed out sins to everybody. You know, he gives us a very prophetic message that we are to know and we're to hear that God has a prophet. After all of these years, it appears that God was silent, but God was always speaking. But God needed somebody who would come at the right moment in time to do what needed to be heard. So now John, that great prophet who was out in the wilderness, it is described that his garment, that he wore, uh, he wore uh, clothes that you wouldn't see people wearing who were going in the palace. John would have on uh, this coat uh, that was made of animal skin. He would have a leather belt. And it said his diet consists of eating locusts and wild honey. Well, the locusts that he ate, it was a kind of grasshopper. It was a kind of quote unquote insect that gave him some great high fiber and nutrition. And, uh, and wild honey was very common in their day. It was one of those purest things that you could find to give you just what you needed. And so John came as being very different, but John had a different message. That's the reason why he dressed differently. 
and everybody knew and heard about John. And so John had a, uh, had a group of followers. He had a bunch of, of fellows who had been with him. They were his disciples and he would go about the countryside uh, preaching and people were coming and being baptized for the remission of their sins. And now we find the setting of our text today that Jesus is at, at the Jordan and John is there baptizing. All the people have been baptized. And then when John is baptizing, he sees Jesus come on the scene and all of a sudden the Holy Spirit is speaking through him. He says, behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of this world. I could only imagine John is saying, behold, the Lamb of God. That's my cousin Jesus. <laughs> could you imagine what was possibly going through his mind? He sees Jesus coming. But because he was sensitive and he heard from God, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who taketh away the sins of this world. John had been baptizing for the remission of sins, but Jesus was the one who would die for all of our sins. He will go to Calvary's cross on a substitutionary death. He died in our place so that you and I could have eternal life. As he's coming, John recognizes him. And Jesus tells John, John, I need for you to baptize me in the Jordan. John pushes back. He said, wait a minute, Jesus, I'm not worthy to baptize you. Matter of fact, I am not even worthy to loosen your sandal strap because I'm a sinful man. You are great. You are greater than I could ever be. You are God in human flesh. And Jesus tells John, I need for you to baptize me. It is so interesting as the story unfolds, it becomes a model that you and I can see of humility. Well, we know Jesus didn't have to be baptized for his sins because he had no sin. He was fully God, fully man, but he had no sin. He was without sin. That's the reason he was able to go to Calvary's cross to die for your sins and for mine because he had no sins. So the text helps us to see that John comes telling everybody to rethink your life, to rethink how you've been living. But now when Christ comes, his baptism takes on a whole different meaning. The baptism of Jesus was not like any baptism of all the other persons that John had baptized because John had baptized hundreds. People had come from all over to be baptized by John. And so now I can see John not being able to baptize Jesus the way he baptized everybody else, because I believe he probably had a litany or something that he would say that he would say, I now baptize you, my brother or my sister, for the remission of your sins. Your sins have now been washed away. He couldn't say that about Jesus. Jesus didn't have any sins. There was nothing to be washed away. So this baptism of Jesus and the echo in all of our mind's eye and in our ears, we hear, take me to the water to be baptized. This text unfolds itself that when, when Jesus gets into the water with John, and John takes Jesus down to baptize him. The text says that straightway Jesus came out of the water. John was saying to himself, what in the world is going on? I've always taken people down and brought them back up. But Jesus came up with a mighty power that John had never seen before. He comes up out of the water. And as he comes up out of the water, it begins to let us see that the baptism that John gave was one of full immersion. It wasn't one that he sprinkled. It wasn't one that he poured, but he took him totally down in the water. And as he goes down in the water, he comes up and the spirit of God in the form of a dove lights on his shoulder. We begin to see in John's mind and in John's eye, he sees along with all the others, the Trinity being manifest in one place at one time. We have the Son. We have the Spirit in the form of a dove. And we hear the voice of God speaking from heaven, saying, this is my dear Son. The Word says, this is my dearly loved Son who brings me great joy. So that's the Father saying, Jesus is my Son. He authenticates what the angel told Mary what the angel told Joseph that you're going to have a child and the child that you're about to have is the son of God. God says, this is my son and he brings me great joy. 
Now, this baptism that Jesus has from John is so different than all the baptisms that John has ever done. Jesus has no sin, but Jesus is being baptized of John to fulfill what it tells us in Isaiah 43 through 4, how God is going to do this powerful thing. Now, remember, John is the prophet that they now hear, a modern day prophet. It's been hundreds of years since Malachi, the last prophet, was there. Now, after this baptism of John with Jesus in the Jordan, all of us begin to see baptism from a whole different light. Well, Jesus was baptized to demonstrate to us what God is about to do, how Jesus is going to be crucified. He's going to be buried, but he's going to be resurrected by the power of the Holy Spirit. And we will know that this is God's son. Now, when you and I find ourselves being baptized, we do a baptism that is an outward demonstration of what God has done for us. Now, all of us know if we would read the scripture, baptism is not necessary for us to go to heaven, but baptism is something that we do as identification with the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. When we are baptized as believers, we go down in the water, the symbolism that my old life is now buried. And when we come up out of the water, It's the symbolism that I'm now a new creature in Christ. The Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if anyone be in Christ, they're a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. Oh, take me to the water. When you and I go to the water, it is then that we go down, symbolizing our old nature has been buried and we are now coming up as new creatures in Christ. That's the reason why it's important for us to confess with our mouths and believe in our hearts that God has raised them from the dead and then we'll be saved. Our lives have been resurrected to a new life. The baptism is an outward sign of our personal humility. Just as Christ humbled himself and came into the form of humanity, just as he humbled himself to be baptized by John in the Jordan, it gives us some powerful words that as a part of our identification with Christ, that we too become baptized to make an outward demonstration to the world that I have received Christ as my Lord and Savior. I'm coming up as a new creature in Christ. Take me to the water. You know, whenever you and I go to the water, it's to show everybody my sins have been washed away and I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Today, if you don't know Christ as Lord and Savior, we invite you to receive him. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. John 17 says that God sent his son into the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And as a part of that obedience and a part of that identification, we're baptized with Christ. Are the words that I use when I baptize someone. I use their name, my brother, my sister, based upon your profession of faith, having received the Lord Jesus Christ as your savior in the presence of God, angels and this assembly and in obedience to Christ's command. I take you to the waters of baptism to be baptized according to the way Jesus said, according to Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go, therefore, and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son and in the whole name of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always. Then we take them down into the water, and we let them know they're now a new creature in Christ. Now, when you and I have done this public demonstration, it's our identification with Jesus going down in the water, coming back, and now being filled with God's Spirit. When God's Spirit led on Jesus' shoulder, It's to remind us that God's spirit wants to be in all of our lives. So we, too, can have that same experience of having the spirit speak to us. Now, you know, whenever the Holy Spirit speaks to us, it is then that we know that we are the children of God. The Bible reminds us, how do we know that we're the children of God? Because the spirit bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know one day we shall be changed and made like unto him. Oh, take me to the water. Jesus said to John, take me to the water. Today, I hope you can say, take me to the water.
Pastor, I have made my profession of faith. I've received Jesus. Now I too want to go to the water. If you want to be baptized, we'll be more than happy to take you to the waters of baptism to make your outward declaration to the world that you've received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And for that reason, your sins have been washed away. You've been forgiven and now you're a new creature in Christ. Today, let's all of us look at the text to see what John did. John said, behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sins of this world. Let's point everybody to Jesus, who is the Lamb of God, the one who takes away all of our sins. And we identify with him as he identifies with us. We're baptized and then we come up out of the water. Today is that Sunday in all of our Christian calendars where we begin to recognize the baptism of Jesus the Christ. It lets all of us know that God has done a work for us. And because he's done it all for us, we can sing with new meaning that song. Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it whiter than snow. Oh, what can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. When you and I really confess Christ as our Lord and Savior, when we follow him in water baptism, it is then that we declare to the world that I know Jesus and I've decided to make him my choice. My brothers and my sisters, I hope you can say that I've decided to follow Jesus. And if you have, email us and let us know. Email us at join at the fountain of Raleigh.org. We'll be happy to let you know that we're here with you as you have joined that innumerable band of those who have decided to follow Christ. And today, if you would like to not only join us in that innumerable band, but you'd like for us to pray for you and pray with us, email us at prayer at the fountain of Raleigh.org. We promise you that we will offer your prayer request to God. The Bible reminds us that those of us who offer unto God sincere and fervent prayer, God will bring about a change in our situations and he will give us the solution. Today, I hope you will trust Christ like never before. Trust him as your Lord and Savior. Follow him in baptism and then be discipled. We'd love to help disciple you as we disciple one another to become those who will walk with God and do what he's called us to do. This year of 2023, I want you to know that God wants to do something greater in your life than you have ever imagined. It's a day and it's a time we're all poised for God to do great and marvelous things. Ephesians 3 and 20 tells us now unto him who is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all you're able to ask, say or think according to his mighty power at work within you. That's why we can say you are exceedingly and abundantly blessed. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And let's pray together. Father, I thank you for my brothers and my sisters. I thank you for those who have been a part of this service of worship. We thank you for those who are virtually engaging with us. And Father, we pray that all of us will come to that assurance of knowing that you love us in so much of a way that you gave yourself for us. Now, Father, we offer ourselves to you. We thank you for blessing us and allowing us to be here. God, we lift up all of those who said, please, please pray for me. We lift up those who've had injuries. We lift up those who've had deaths. Father, we lift up the Catholic Church. We lift up every believer who said, I need to hear from God. Now, God, we offer unto you all of those who are dealing with the battleground of the mind, the body and the spirit. Thank you for recuperation from surgery. Thank you for those who are having healing of their minds. Now, God, help us to be the people you've called us to be. May we reach out with love and may we reach out with words of affirmation and arms of embracement to let us know that we are loved by you and loved by each other. Now, Father, whatever we need to offer to you, we give to you our time, our talent and our treasure. Use it for your glory. And we promise to give you the praise. It's these and all other blessings we ask in the name that's above every name, Jesus the Christ, our Savior. Now unto him, the great shepherd who gave his life for the sheep. May the Lord bless, preserve and keep you from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. May he bless you and your joys, your sorrow, your leisure and your labor and give you bright hope for today as well as tomorrow. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. 
Amen and amen. Always know you're exceedingly and abundantly blessed because God has a very special blessing in store for you. And this year of 2023, it's going to be bigger than you've ever seen before. I look forward to sharing with you again on tomorrow. To sow a seed to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship, visit our newly redesigned website, thefountainofraleigh.org, and select Sow a Seed from the homepage. Also, giving has been made easier with the new Fountain of Raleigh app, available now in the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Download today, select Giving from the main menu, and then follow the directions to complete your giving through Subsplash. Thank you so very much for all of your gifts and donations that you've given to the Fountain of Raleigh Fellowship. We thank you for what you've done in the past, what you're currently doing, and what you will do in the future. Your gifts and donations helps us to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ, not only locally, but throughout the world. Thank you again for your gifts, and may God continue to richly bless you. It is here at the Fountain that we believe that we are exceedingly and abundantly blessed, and may you receive those blessings that God has in store for you. Okay.